everyone. Um, I read the book Some Writer, the story of E.B. White um, by Melissa Sweet. She was the author and illustrator, um, and it was sort of an illustrated biography, so a, definitely a different kind of um, book than most of us are used to. Uh, it was an American uh, Library Association notable children's book, and um, Orbis Pictus Award 2017. The book itself came out in 2016. I chose it because I love Charlotte's Web. I'm a pre-K teacher and I read it every year, um, like right before Christmas. And it's amazing how, um, how much my students love it. It's, you know, it's one of the best empathy building books that has ever been written. Um, and I knew nothing about E.B. White um, before starting the book. So when I saw it on one of the lists, I was like, yeah, definitely. Um, definitely could <laughs> use some info. Um, the book follows White's life, uh, life story, and, and the part that literacy, nature, and curiosity play in his successes. Um, you find out how his most popular works came to be as well as how his childhood interests spawned a successful career. Um, it's a really interesting book, um, a, a really interesting look at uh, kind of the way writers' interests and lives are intertwined and, you know, they use so much of their childhood and the, and the things they hold near and dear and put into their writing, um, especially when they're writing for children because the memories they have as children are, you know, held so close. Um, I would, I would recommend this book for uh, probably f uh, fifth through seventh grade reading levels. It's about, I want to say, a hundred and thirty-six pages, give or take. So, you know, fourth grade would probably be great too. Um, but, but it, you know, it's a long book. Um, Super duper interesting. I think I'm probably going to tell my dad he would love it uh, just because it's, you know, interesting for all ages. Um, I think that as far as the genre, um, E.B. White is not, a, he's very well known, but he his story maybe is not as well known. So I think this book is important, especially for teachers who, who teach his books to have um, a lot of background knowledge. Um... And I had none. <laughs> oh, um, my five um, interesting facts. As a child, he loved to write poems. So um, the book is an illustrated biography, but it also is kind of collage style. So there are a, lo a lot of his poems were in there, which I thought was really cool. Um, his nickname became Andy in, when he was in college at Cornell. Um, at one point, the <laughs> his name in the book was Andy. And I was confused. I was like, is this a different person? Um, but then I had to go back. He worked as a reporter for the Seattle Times. I live in Seattle and I subscribe to the Seattle Times. So I thought that was an interesting fact. Um, Stuart Little was his first book. I guess I didn't know that. Um, Charlotte's Web. The idea for Charlotte's Web came from a sick pig he had on his farm. Um, and then also seeing a spider's egg sack, and, and I think he collected that. Um, he later moved to New York and worked for the New Yorker, and at that point he was making enough money that he was able to afford a farm, so lived out there, and that, um, that supported a lot of the background knowledge for Charlotte's Web. It was a working farm. Um, so... The category of nonfiction, I would say factual biography, um, supplemented with a lot of letters and quotes. So um, the story wasn't built. It was, you know, uh, taken from his life. The structure of the book. Um, I think it's, I don't know, it's sort of expository, but not there, you know. Nothing too. Um, organizational pattern. Let's see. Yeah, it was a description of events. So it, you know, his entire life. Um, it had all of the, 
all the organizational tools, um, extensive actually, uh, there was so much, so much, you know, research has to be done for biographies that it was, you know, I looked through the whole bibliography and I was really impressed actually. It's a, you know, it's a collage of letters. So taken from many different sources, um, the way that it was laid out stylistically was really interesting, gorgeous. Um, also thorough as well. I was really impressed by that. Um, the graphics and visual features, there were, there were photographs there. It was scrapbook style. Um, it incorporated, oh, this part was fabulous. So it incorporated E.B. White's love of a manual typewriter. So that was something that Melissa Sweet found in a lot of her research. So she actually wrote on the typewriter and that was what the font was. It also, in the beginning of the book, had a kind of the anatomy of a manual typewriter because, you know, it was written in 2016, so most kids have never seen or even probably heard about a typewriter. Um, I thought that was really, really clever. It's, I, you know, she did an amazing job on this book. Um, it was written on a typewriter, lots of photographs, um, also quotes from his books and um, poetry. And I, yeah, it, un, it completely is my whole understanding of E.B. White's life. I did not know anything. I actually, this is super embarrassing, but I thought that E.B. White was a woman all these years. I, my dad and I read Charlotte's Web when I was probably five or six. So that's embarrassing, especially as a teacher. So I'm so glad I read this book. <laughs> now, I, now I feel like an expert. I know everything there is. Nobody be white. Not really. Um, I highly recommend this book um, to anyone who loves children's literature like most of us. Um, a Shards Web fan, a Stuart Little fan, any of his other books. Um, or anyone who just, you know, wants to know more about that, you know, era and time. Uh, the layout was gorgeous. It was easy reading. Um, but it was also very interesting. I think it is some book.